He's broke. He shouldn't be dating. <laughs> That's the conversation we're going to have today here on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, we're having this conversation because, especially in these times, you're hearing a lot of people because of their situation, um, that's become a real topic where people are really talking about the fact he ain't got no money or she ain't got no money. Um, it comes down to, I think I shared this a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was listening to a podcast and a, and a young lady called in and she made the comment that a guy has to have his stuff together. And then one of the guys asked her, he was like, well, does a woman have to have hers together? And she was like, uh, yeah, well, it, it would be nice. And folks, every time I hear that, I cringe. And the reason I say that is because to say that a guy has to have all his stuff together and at the same time being able to blurt out of your mouth that you don't have to have yours together, that's pretty arrogant. Yeah, that's, I mean, to me, it's, it's how can you put a person somewhere in it and put expectations on them that you can't reach? You guys follow? It's, I always say you got to be willing to accept people where they are. See, there's a difference between being poor and being broke. Because poor is a mentality. Poor is a person who's not doing the things that it takes in order to get their life to a different level. That's a, that's a mentality. Um, broke is a situation. That's something you can look at and go, okay, I don't like where I'm at. Remember we talked about uh, last week about the ability to difference between human beings is we have the ability to pause. That's what makes us different. So we can look at a situation, don't like where we're at, and come up with a game plan in order to correct that. See, that's what broke is. Broke is you just look at your situation and go, huh, okay, how do I get out of this situation? So kind of what we're talking about here. So if a gentleman is broke, I didn't say poor because even that, um, I remember hearing uh, Tony Robbins, who owns his own island on Fiji. Uh, must be pretty nice, you know, to have your own island. But uh, he has a little island on Fiji. And he's always commenting about the fact that some of the happiest people that he ever sees are the people over there in Fiji that have nothing. In terms of what the world considers everything and success and, and the things that we call it. And that's kind of what I'm getting to here is... What is your definition of broke? What is your definition of success? So you have to figure those things out because what he was saying is uh, he was amazed, especially when he first got there because he's looking around and thinking these people lack, at least compared here and what we call uh, success in, in the States. They don't have any of that. And the people barely eating and, you know, the, the homes they live in and stuff, and you just figured they, they got to be sad. And he was like, but they're just some of the happiest people in the world. They're just amazed at how we in the States spend our times chasing after all these material things so that one day we get to sit back and relax. They're saying we're in Fiji. All we do is relax. <laughs> I mean, think about it. I mean, that's what you're shooting for and you think you need all the material things to get there. They're like, shoot, we don't have a material thing, but we're already there. So, but anyway... The topic we're talking about is when should you um, and should you? Because, you know, because I've heard guys that really and, and normally the guys I hear that really talk about a man got to have his stuff together and, and, and all are usually guys that are doing pretty well financially. And it's actually their way of degrading other men, which is unfortunate. But that's their way of kind of looking down on other guys, because what they're actually doing is trying to feel better about themselves. You guys know, I always talk about that. The only reason you put other people down and you tear other people down is so that you feel better. Remember, I said there's two ways to build the tallest building. One, you build the tallest building. The other way, you tear down the buildings around you so you are the tallest building. Unfortunately, that's where most people live. And people that are in that situation that are degrading other men because they're doing well. There's one guy, he's very popular, and I'm not going to throw names out there, but very, very popular, who is one of those that really... 
uh, puts guys down. And, and, and I've even heard him talking to a gentleman one time, and, and, and the gentleman was like, uh, well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I, it's okay if she's making good money and, you know, because we're both in this. And he's like, he looked at the guy kind of strange, like, what? He's like, man, you better go out and make some more money. She ain't got to be out, out here making it happen. Folks, I have a challenge with that, really. When people will holler that she don't have to go out here and make it. Why? Why is it that we're basically saying, if you're a woman, that's enough? All you got to do is be a woman. But as a man, you got to go out here and you got to bust it. You got to work at jobs you don't like, put up with people you don't want to put. Basically, whatever's miserable, if you if that's what you want to call it, because remember, it's all mindset. You got to be willing to do that. And women can just sit at home and do nothing. Now, folks, don't don't jump off the bandwagon on me. That's not <laughs> because I understand most women in this society don't want to be in a position where someone else has that kind of power over them, first off. Because that's usually what happens is, and that's why for me, um, and I've shared that story also, is one of the things I shared with my niece when she was younger because she loves nice, expensive stuff. And I mean, we go out, like I said, she was little and we, we're having dinner and she wants steak and lobster. We like, how does she even know what a lobster is? And, and I used to tell her all the time, ain't nothing wrong with you having uh, nice taste and, and quality and expensive, you know, what we call expensive. But just make sure you can support that lifestyle. Don't go out here looking for a man and putting him on, in a position that he has to take care of your desires. You guys follow me with that? That's what I'm, you can't go out here and create these lofty goals, these lofty dreams, the mansions, the homes, the traveling the world, you got all this and then you say, but I'm looking for a man to take, make all that reality, huh? What? Why? What gives you the right to believe that you should be able to just sit back and just be pretty? I guess if that's what you want to call it or prissy or whatever words people want to use. It's like, why do you think you should have that? Pri I mean, I know society has tried to kind of implant that. It's an old way of thinking. Um, especially if you live in places like California where it takes two incomes. You guys have heard me say that before. Shoot, all of my friends that are successful in real estate said, shoot, it don't only take two incomes. People trying to push their kids. The kid just learned how to walk and they try to get the kid a job because of the, the cost of living. Folks, it's, it's hard out here. I mean, I saw a thing even yesterday. They said the average medium income is $61,000 in the U.S., that's 61,000. Folks, 61,000 is not going that, that far with a family. And think about that. That's the average. So that means they're taking the people that got money, big time money, and putting it with the people that don't have no money and coming up with a 61,000 average. That's, that's scary. So to think that it's really, if you go into most neighborhoods, it's going to be a lot less than the 60,000. But even if we go with the 60, folks, that's not an extravagant lifestyle. And that's the family income. And we're out here teaching the guy needs to be out here making that, folks. And, and, and I've always said, ladies, if, if you find that guy that's in that position, cool. If you find a guy that's willing to let you stay at home, if that's what you want to do. Because, folks, again, I'm not here to say right, wrong, good or bad. You know, like I said, this is your journey. This is your life. You walk it out the way you see fit. I'm just saying I have a challenge with people that have an expectations on others that they refuse to put on themselves. That's where I'm getting to. You can't tell others they, they have to go out here and you have to be extraordinary. And I don't even have to be average. I just got to be here. Huh? That's my point. What gives you the right to be, even think or believe that? So anyway, you guys tell I get fired up on that. <laughs> but it's uh, my thing. And, what, and this gentleman that I was talking about that, that has a tendency to look down on guys and, 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 telling, and he was telling the guy, you need to go make more. And, you, you know, this is a guy, if you do the research on him, he ran out on his first family. Huh? Because he didn't have money. In search of money. That's why he supposedly ran off. Folk, you ran and left your family behind. And now you're out here trying to degrade other men and put other... 
folks. And and fortunately and unfortunately, again, I usually hear those conversations from the guys that are doing pretty well now. It's the same thing with the guys that you see that are pretty, you know, nice shape, you know, physiques and the other ones that like, yeah, because if you got a man that he ain't, you know, he ain't taking care of his body, why? Because his body's in great shape, so he wants to degrade it. Back to what we said before. Let people walk out their journey. Quit trying to put, just because you happen to have a great, you're in shape, you're into your health, don't degrade other people because they're not. If they choose too great or they choose not too great, I'm not here to tell you again, good, bad, right, or wrong. I would recommend if you're unhealthy that you strive towards getting healthy. That's that's on you. Now, however that looks, that's on you. Now, if you can be healthy eating tacos and hamburgers and and and, and, and chips and cookies, and folks, don't think because and, and this is a mistake when it comes to health. People think because they see somebody slender, and that's the challenge I have with people that are that some of them that are slender, when they look down on other people as far as being because they're heavy set, folks. You can be slender and totally ill, totally messed up inside, very sick, because it's not about the outward appearance as we talk about with everything. It's all internal. My thing is, if you know your internal is, is being messed up or is being restricted or you're putting yourself at risk, then you have to clean yourself up for that reason. However that is, again, I'm not here to tell you good, bad, right, or wrong. But I would recommend do that so you can be around here for a long, even if you broke, <laughs> and then you can move towards acquiring more. But anyway, um, but back to should, when should you date? Should you date broke and all that? Folks, that's up to you. Again, quit trying to tell people what to do. Now, for me, honestly, personally, if I don't have anything, I'm not dating. That's just me. And again, I'm not saying because men shouldn't. Because for me to say that personally, I would have to say the same thing. I would have to turn around and say, well, if I believe a guy can't go out if he has no money, I personally would feel the same way that a woman shouldn't go out either. She don't have none. I, I, that's the way I live. I mean, I, maybe that's a bad thought process, but I do. I believe, again, like I said, don't put expectations on people that you're not willing to put on yourself. So if you're okay with sitting at home, then you shouldn't have a problem with him sitting at home. That that's that couple can work. Like I said, we can go to Fiji and it probably is working. But you have to decide for yourself what works. If you only want a man that got it going on, and a man that got it going on is willing to be with you if you don't have it going on, that's beautiful. But I think we're in a society in most cases that the guy is looking for someone who's out there doing something. And I'm not even talking about material things. See, and this is where I'm saying, don't get it twisted to things that I talk about. When I'm saying going, got it going on, doesn't mean you're making six-figure, seven-figure income. But you're doing something. You're making things happen with your life. You're not just sitting around watching TV. For me personally, okay? You're not just sitting around, sitting in front of the TV, uh, knowing what all the different you know shows that are coming on. You know all of them, each one, what time slots they coming on, and you're sitting there... For me personally, I, I can't get involved in that. And again, I'm not here to say that's right or wrong. There are people that would joy, would love to sit on the couch with you and watch TV all day long. Then you guys are good for each other. Remember, the whole idea, find out what you're looking for and find someone who's on the same path that you are. Even if your person is not doing something and you want somebody that got it going on, if they're willing to, to, to work with you, cool. I'm not here to say right or wrong. Cool, if that works for you. Again, I'm just saying, do not put in expectations on others that you refuse to put on yourself. So, again, I, and, and again, I shared this story, and I told you because my, my niece had told me that recently, you know, she was like, uh, she had just bought, she had bought her car, she bought her, uh, what is it, her, her uh, laptop, her Mac, and um, sometimes she had gotten, but anyway. But she got three, I mean, pretty nice, expensive things, you know, that she had just bought recently. She said, Uncle, I did it all by myself. And she, no, I applauded her. Why? Because she said, just like you told me, I went and made it happy. I didn't wait for nobody else to do it for me. Folk, and that's, and she even brought that to me a couple of days ago. She had threw it at me. She's like, yeah, because like you told me, don't sit around and wait for other people. And I, And again, I reminded her, 
I am not saying you can't have others help you in your journey. Folks, that, again, this is not what I'm saying. Don't misinterpret. As human beings, there's no self-made anything. All these people that keep running around here talking about their self-made are full of garbage. You know what words I would actually say, but I don't talk like that. There's no such thing as a self-made anything. The reality is everything in life, someone has contributed to you. Even if they looked, even if you looked at them and said, what I don't want to do is because of their actions that you responded in a certain way. If you have a product or a service, you're, if nobody buys your product or service, you can't make money. How is that self-made? You guys follow? I don't care what you're doing in, in life. You're going to need others to contribute. Or as they say, if others didn't contribute, you probably didn't do nothing with your life. It's that simple. So don't buy into them when people go, well, I'm a self-made millionaire. No, you, you, you know, <laughs> let me not get started. But anyway, bottom line is, you know what I'm saying. There's no such thing. Someone is always contributing to everything. You may have had to put a lot of work in. That part's true. But in order to get where you want to go, if, if there's something that's, that's out there that's, that's uh, like you're trying to get to the top of the hill, yeah, that's, that's going to take a lot of work. You can't get to the top. You, you got to get to the top. You got you to put in some work. And those that even say, well, see, there's an example. A person can get to the top of the mountain by themselves. No, you can't. They need rope. They need stakes. Who made the ropes? Who made the stakes? You see, I can go on and on. I can tear down whatever it is you come up. There's no such thing as self-made nothing. People taught them how to climb. P teacher, they didn't figure all this stuff out by themselves. So don't try to take the credit for everything. Be able to give people their props for, for their contributions to your life. And so anyway, and I was glad to hear her say that, but what I had told her is, but, don't, but there's nothing wrong with, it, with accepting and allowing people to contribute to you along that journey. I just don't ever want you having the mentality that you're going to sit back and wait for someone else to do it and take care of you. And again, for those of you who like that lifestyle, go for it. I'm not here to tell you right or wrong. I ain't hanging out with you. <laughs> but but there's some people that be willing to put up. And again, that's not saying you have certain guidelines and she's got to be making a certain amount of money or she got I'm just saying a driven individual. You got to be doing something. You can't just be sitting back and you guys get to decide on what broke is because broke again is a situation if we even talking about finances, but it's bigger than that. But if we're only talking about finances, you have to decide that. And again, for me personally, if I don't have the money that I could actually take you out and show you a good time, the reason that I'm not is because I personally would feel bad because I'm not going to personally allow a woman to take care of me. And see, folks, I didn't say reverse that. And see, that's why I said it works both ways. I didn't say because in a society, we have a problem with a guy sitting at home and doing nothing. People be like, what do you mean? He don't work. We'll jump down his throat and demean him. But if we switch it around and it's a woman sitting at home, we just go, oh, there ain't nothing wrong with that. To each his own. Again, I'm not saying good, bad, right, or wrong. But you have to decide for yourself what it is that you're looking for, what you want out of life. Quit letting the world tell you what's right, what's wrong. Um, I'm not doing it personally. If I don't have the, the means, I'm not doing it just for me personally because we can call it ego, we can call it pride, we can call it, you know, whatever it is. But for me personally, I would just feel, um, I would almost feel like I'm using you if, if we go in places and you have to keep tape paying the tab, I personally can't live that way. I can't allow someone to take care of me. Again, there's nothing wrong with people contributing to you along the journey. There's a difference in somebody basically taking care of you. That I would never put myself in that position. And again, as far as roles, we have people that say, but it's okay for a woman to be taken care of. The guy needs to go do whatever he can so she can be taken care of. And again, I'm not saying that's good, bad, right, or wrong. I do believe a lot of that has disappeared, that kind of thought process, um, because we are in a position, again, you guys, uh, I talked about this probably ooh, a few months ago, where I saw some statistics. They were saying um, one in three marriages, the wife is earning more money than the husband. One in three, folks, 
One in three. They didn't say 300. They didn't say 3,000. One in, you put three women standing there that's married. One of those three makes more than her husband. And we're still having this conversation. It is in that same thing that I read was saying like 48. It was like 48. I know it was almost right there at 50. It, but it was almost at 50% of the millionaires today are women. And we're still having this conversation. Folks, welcome to the real world. In the real world, you do what works for your particular situation. You get to decide on whether your date, depending on your income level. And, and again, there are women that want to take care of their men. And there's men that will allow you to do that. Now, I'm not one of those. I'm not going to let you take care of me. That's something totally different. But again, you get to decide that particular situation. Because trust me, whatever you decide, there is somebody out there that's willing to accept you, whatever the conditions are. I'm personally just not going to be one of those that, that allow you to take care of me. I'm personally not going to gonna start dating if, if I'm in a position that I feel like I can't show you a good time. Because for me, there's a lot of stuff. And again, you guys know, I believe there's a lot of stuff that you can do and you can go do for free. But there are times, at least I want to go out and have a steak dinner. I want to go out and do a little, you know, a little something, something. Let's go out and do some stuff. But if I'm sitting there and the only thing that we can do because of finances is sit at home and watch TV and do some popcorn. I can't stay there and I have to go out and, and make some things happen. And again, that's different when you're single than when you have a family. Because I'm never going to listen to any reason for running out on your family, hollering about you got to go earn the money. Folks, you better figure out a way to do both. If you leave your family, that decision was all about you. It had nothing to do with your family. You can't leave them to fend for themselves and talking about, but I'm going to do this for them. No, you're not. Because if they're counting on you, they're going to starve. You have to find a way to do both. You got to stay there. Take care of your family. Whatever means you got to do to make that happen, you guys do. Uh, from a legal perspective, <laughs> don't misinterpret what I said. But from a legal perspective, you go out here and you make, them, make some stuff happen. And, and then those of you who are out here doing well, quit looking down on other guys just because you went out. And especially, um, again, that, that gentleman that I'm talking about, because he's, he's, he's got a big name and he's huge. And it just, it's, it, it, it really hits me the wrong way when I hear him look down on guys and really basically talks like, it's your job. She should never have to work. She should never. And it's because now he's doing well financially. But he's not going to tell you the story that when it first started, he ran out on his family because of money. So that wasn't a decision about his family. That was a decision for himself. So again, as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It's my opinion. For those of you who we talk on uh, Monday, I look forward to talking to you on Self Love Monday when we get that love thing going on. And then for those of you who we, uh, we, we're we talking about relationships today, we deal with a little broke issue <laughs> today. And, uh, but uh I look forward to talking to you next Thursday on Relationship Thursday. Either way, you guys know, go out here and enjoy this journey we call life. Quit letting the world tell you how it should be, who you should go out with, who you shouldn't, what's their financial situation, all that kind of stuff. Folks, figure out what works for you and go out here and enjoy this journey because that's really what this is all about. It's about enjoying the journey that's in front of us. And again, if you guys know, as you know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys later. You take care and enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye-bye.